What is up everybody? I'm no Lux Given, and today we're gonna be looking at three games of Storybook Brawl that unfortunately are a little too similar. I've been getting a little bit unlucky recently. I've had some really good games as well, but today I'm gonna look at some games that haven't quite panned out, and I feel like I've been doing that a little bit too much on the channel recently. And I, I want to, like, I'm still trying to do big things. I think that that's potentially part of the problem sometimes, is I try to go too big. And when that fails, then, well, it just doesn't work out at all. Now, like I said, we are going to get to some sweet games starting in the week, kind of saving those. But wanted to share some other experiences that I've had recently. And I'm kind of just going to breeze through these games because we're going to look at three different games and I also haven't sped up the clips here. Uh, in this game, I wind up picking up a Dragon's Nest as Pan's Shadow, which is a really, really good treasure on the hero because I typically wind up playing Slay on Pan's Shadow. And I wanted to see, is Pan's Shadow worse now that Evil Eye and Horn of Olympus are both tier five treasures? Used to be one of those was tier four, so you had something to build towards as soon as you hit level four. Uh, but now it's kind of awkward because you want the tier four characters, but you want the tier five treasures. So you have to spend time picking up both of those things. And, well, we also get a little bit unlucky. Like I said, we are going to find some more treasures before we hit uh, 4.0 here. And picking those up allows us to have a pretty big crafty. It was just black cats and crafties. Uh, the crafties were pretty straightforward. The black cats, I think there was a triple of them uh, that I could just pick up extremely easy. So this is how I wind up filling out the board here going into 5.0. I do also grab a baby dragon and that's really important because I don't actually grab any other dragons. And uh, let's jump ahead into that now. Now this shop is pretty interesting. I could even rewind this for a second. I'm going to feed Cindy to the Kraken. And then we've got a lot of really powerful units here. We've got Sporko plus Lady of the Lake with a plus one plus one on them from Fairy Tale. But we also have a pair and another way to build a treasure. And I like Nutcracker in general. I think that it's probably the weakest and least utilized questing character. But when you can also combine that with a pair of Heartwood Elders, I think that that is a pretty good pickup. There is still some incentive to just try to roll for dragons just because dragons with the dragon's nest is an extremely powerful start to the game. And for that reason, I don't lock. And I also wind up doing a little bit of rolling, but just do not find a single dragon. That's that's where a little bit of the unluck comes in. Uh, and then I wind up rolling one more time into a shop with two XP spells. Now I've already cast my spell for the turn. I cast Forbidden Fruit. So all I can really do here is sell one of my characters to pick up two characters in this shop. I'm gonna think about that for a second, what exactly I want that to be. But I think I'm gonna get rid of Sherwood Shore Shot. I'm gonna pick up the Monster Book. And then I'm also gonna pick up the um, River Wish Mermaid because that is, oh, you know what? Actually, I might pick up Amy here. Uh, Amy is pretty good just as an 8-8. Uh, but Monster Book, Amy, I think that either of these are fine options. I know that I want River Wish Mermaid because I want to start growing some dragons once I can find them. But once I find the XP, that definitely pushes me in a different direction. So uh, this shop winds up being, uh, or not this shop, this next treasure that I get winds up being kind of funny. I thought I grabbed it this turn. I guess I must grab it next turn. It doesn't look like this Nutcracker is gonna be able to survive one more hit. So, um, Oh, okay. Another Heartwood Elder rolls into the shop. I knew we grabbed a tier four treasure this turn because it's going to be funny. Uh, Fool's Gold presents itself and uh, Gloves of Thieving. Both really good treasures, both good for econ. I'm going to pick up one or the other, but ultimately I am going to decide on Fool's Gold. And this is a little bit silly. I maybe should have tossed the Big Book of Spells. I do still like Big Book of Spells though. And we don't actually even... Like, the fact that we're not going to be seeing any spells in our shop from Fool's Gold isn't a huge deal because we're going to be casting these XP spells the next two turns. So I'll end up pivoting this in a slightly different direction 
we're going to go into trees with Heartwood Elder and um, grabbing some XP here to uh, kick things off. I'm not really playing that many characters this turn. I only wind up playing five, and I probably get a little bit punished for this. We do have a really big crafty, uh, but yeah, my opponent's got a Medusa. So we're going to wind up taking a little bit of damage. We do get the treasure from Nutcracker, though, so that's fine. Uh, definitely a little bit greedy, though, I would say. Uh, and you can't all just fault like all of your losses to luck. It's, it's actually a pretty good thing. I'll talk about it here a little bit as we go through this turn. It's a reasonable thing to actually just record yourself playing games, especially strategy games, even if you're not making content. And then you can kind of go back and look at your games afterwards. I found that that's a pretty good tool. Um, I didn't always record myself while playing Pokemon Go. Um, obviously not just when like I'm walking around and catching Pokemon, but when I am doing the battling part of it. PvP was added to that game after a while for those that dropped it before that came out. But I actually found just recording my games in Pokemon Go did a lot for keeping me accountable, keeping me honest uh, in terms of making sure like I was making good plays and then also just when I did make mistakes allowed me to go back and review that footage and see what was going on a lot easier. So uh, we do eventually wind up finding a dragon as we are moving into 6.0 and totally beyond that stage of the game. Uh, yeah, just a little bit awkward. Normally find a whole bunch more dragons on Pan Shadow, but in this one I wind up going a lot more into trees. We're going to see an uh, Ashwood Elm on the 6.0 turn with a Heartwood Elder already. So it makes it pretty clear to move into trees. Somewhat tempted by a Chupacabra, but there's not really good tier four treasures, so not super interested in that. And then I find another Heartwood Elder. So I'm going to pick that wind. I'm going to wind up picking that up. We've got Staff of the Old Toad. We're also up against the Ghost here, so we can really just spend as much time as possible picking up as many trees as possible. I'm going to find another Ashwood Elm, and I do believe I'll pick that up this turn as well, and try to slay with the Ogre Princess that we just stole from our last opponent. Uh, we have to sell four things to pick this up, so it's a little bit awkward. We have to sell out of our pair of Wombats or, like, sell our upgraded characters. Could be okay to do up against the Ghost. That way you've got Wombats and and can potentially build into a tier five treasure. Uh, but what we are actually going to wind up doing, looks like we will pick up a Hercules, and this is gonna be a very slow Hercules, if I remember this game correctly. It's just got 25 attack. We are still, I believe, uh, okay, the rest of the lobby is hitting 6.0 this turn. So Hercules is still pretty big when you look at the rest of the board. It can still get in for two combats here and uh, get halfway through completed, so that's pretty nice. And then I believe it might take two more combats to activate. No, looks like it's going to be good and activate right now. It must get attacked into... Oh, okay. It gets attacked into by the Lancelot. So we get the Hercules treasure. Um, that's actually pretty great. And we're hanging in there in these combats. Plus we're at 24 health. So just taking a little bit of damage. Sure, my opponent gets a four glory against us. They've got Hand of Might, a Staff of the Old Toad, some pretty good stuff. But... We get a tier six, make that a tier seven treasure. I was just trying to time out towards the end of the game because I know what's coming out of this tier six treasure. It's going to be a pretty common thing throughout this video. Like I said, all three of these games kind of similar in a really unfortunate way. But I'm going to triple Ashwood Elm and then I am going to, I suppose, pick up an Embiggening Stone, toss in my Fool's Gold. And we still really need a Burning Beard. We are up against the Ghost, though, like I said. So we do have some time to pick that up. And uh, hanging on to Hercules for sure to potentially be able to... Yeah, uh, no way we can cast this Knighthood. We're, we're still a few... Oh, wait, I have a Burning Beard. Sorry. <laughs> I missed that in um, the, the fast forwarding there. I was like, what am I going to use the Knighthood on? Well, I'd love to Knighthood a Burning Beard. Oh. Oh, there it is. I do have that already. Um, could go for the True Love's Kiss on Hercules, selling off the other three things on the bench. I don't think that that is uh, totally out of the question, uh, but ultimately going to wind up uh, just rolling down and looking for some more stuff. And then I'll jump ahead. We're going to play the Ogre Princess again against the Ghost. 
uh, it's not going to matter. We're going to kill my opponent before uh, all of their things get to, or before the Ogre Princess gets to attack even, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. And then we're going to find Holy Grail off the Pandora's box. So this is really, really good if we can stick around for a turn. And, well, of course, you kind of know what's going to happen from there. I am somewhat tempted by Double Good Boy with Embiggening Stone. And uh, that could obviously be really, really powerful. But I'm just going to try to find some more trees. Not really going to wind up finding too much more. I find a uh, Echo Wood, actually. That's pretty big, considering we... Uh, uh, we're still playing that Ogre Princess, and I didn't actually want to play that, but we'll take a look at the last combat of the game. And I want to make clear here, like, I feel like we got lucky at other parts of the game. I don't feel like we get lucky, or unlucky, did I say lucky? I meant unlucky, in any of the, like, final combats of the game. It's not like we get scammed in any of them, it's just we took a little bit longer putting together our stuff compared to our opponents, and our opponents put together some pretty good comps. And uh, I guess I'll just spoil it right now. Um, all three of these games, we're gonna get third place on the turn that we would have had a Holy Grail activate. So just absolutely tragic stuff. We can see my opponent here with some massive mages and a pretty large Jormungand at that, uh, but a really massive Scion of the Storm. So uh, I think we wind up taking Exaxes from this one, which is kind of tragic in its own right, because uh, if we had just survived by a little bit, we could have Holy Grailed with Embiggening Stone and Pan Shadow. So that could have been really great. Game number two winds up being pretty silly, in fact, because I kind of like... I wasn't intentionally trying to do this, uh, but I wound up kind of making it into a challenge run for myself because I want that polywoggle, but there's just not a great opportunity to pick it up. I mean, in this shop, we're gonna roll the die, but on turn two, there just winds up being better things for me to purchase. So I just wind up locking this polywoggle basically forever. And uh, I do think it would be a fun challenge run to do at some point to just have a game where I have to lock every turn. Uh, it seems pretty, pretty impossible, but it's basically what we're gonna do here. We didn't grab the extra gold from the Kitty Cup purse, so I'm just gonna go four glory plus uh, pick up the unit that I think has the best chance of allowing me to win this turn, which is the Rainbow Unicorn, though it is still gonna be tight. Uh, we can see that all four of these players lost, and all four of these players won. Uh, we could have seen that even on the old client, but now we can check and see that the Horde Dragon is win streaking. Uh, but I do like the ability, especially in the early game, those first few turns to see if your next opponent just won, because then you get a sense of their relative strength there. So we do wind up tying this combat. It's fine. We get the Kitty Cup per slay. It's good, but we don't get the four glory. But we could try to get the four glory again. This is a really weird shop where we've got double baby dragon and double polywoggle. Uh, I probably want to pick up a pair and because I'm buying the four glory, I probably want to go for the baby dragon route, but I also want the polywoggles. A pair of polywoggles just seems really good, um, not even just on Phoenix Angel in particular, but, but just in general, uh, picking up a pair of polywoggles. Picking up a pair of polywoggles. Uh, I don't know if it's really always going to be worth locking into on 2.0, and I think for most heroes, I would not. However, Phoenix Angel does give you a little bit more leeway because you're gonna get that good level three character for free. That could be a stag. That would be fantastic with a pair of polywoggles could also be a Brave Princess, which is like the main thing that you'll want to pick up on 3.0. And if you find it through Phoenix Angel, then you don't have to worry about rolling for it. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Now, we wind up getting Good Witch, which is fine. There's another one in the shop, which is interesting. And then I think I just pick up Golden Chicken here cast the spell and lock onto these polywoggles again. Like I said, it's a little bit of a challenge run and we're gonna wind up locking this shop basically every turn and then again on this turn. There's 
three really good things I want to pick up here. I want to pick up the Sleeping Princess, I want to pick up the Stag, and I'll probably sell something off to pick up this spell. That part's a little bit tricky because I don't want to break up a pair, I don't want to sell the Kitty Cup purse, I don't want to sell any of my good characters, so it's a little bit hard to pick up the Luna's Grace. I actually might not. I might just lock onto it here. I think I do wind up selling a Baby Dragon, though, and picking that up. Yeah. That's just better. Um, it's so much more stats, a 13-15 now that I get to play, uh, so definitely worthwhile. We see that my opponent has a Feasting Dragon. That's pretty powerful, but we've got a 13-15, so that is quite the character. We're going to deny my opponent a Slay even. Uh, that one probably doesn't feel great. And now, finally, I will pick up the Polywoggles on 3.2, I believe. Uh, we'll finally pick these guys up. And then I'm looking for a triple of Polywoggles and also somewhat interested in an XP spell here. This shop has got a lot of things going for us. Uh, the XP spell will just give us more... Uh, it'll give us a better character when we eventually do try to slay with this Polywoggle. And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here, just yada yada through some of it. I sell off the Baby Dragon to pick up the Mummy. This next turn I triple the Good Witch and then pick up the Wish Upon a Star. Still just hanging on to the Polywoggles. I do want to note, I forgot to lock this turn. Now, this shop is absolutely horrible. If I was thinking about it, I would have locked... Just for the challenge, just for the meme, I have literally locked every single shop leading up to this point. You can still roll. I've rolled. But you have to lock every time. Uh, and I don't know. And now at this point, like, uh, we're, we're not playing a challenge. And I realized it, like, right here. I tried to press control. I just wasn't quick enough. Um, it's hard to remember stuff like that. Uh, it's a lot easier to do challenges in, like, an untimed mode or something like that. But uh, really unfortunate. And now, now I don't know what we're doing. Now we're just playing a normal game of Storybook Brawl. We do still get the win, uh, so that's nice. And next turn we will be on, or, or no, I'm sorry, this turn we're on 5.0. I, I thought that that might have been the Wish Upon a Star turn, but the Monster Book cast the Falling Stars and confused me there for a second. We grab a Lancelot from the Phoenix Angel Hero Power. That's also kind of insane, and now we're on 5.0. So now I just want to connect with Polywoggles and um, that seems really awesome. So gonna pick up some nice characters here as well and then a Forbidden Fruit so that way I can roll for some Woggles. The really good thing about Lightning Dragon is you can pick that up, put that in slot one, put Stag in slot two, and then Polywoggles in slot five, uh, potentially five and six and that allows you to uh, have some better odds at slaying with the Polywoggle. Speaking of slaying, if we can get Lancelot to slay just one time, then we can activate Lancelot with this spell. So I'm gonna go for that as well and see where that takes us. We did get the slay. We're gonna put Lance to 25 here, and then there's some other interesting things, but I basically just wind up rolling down. And from here, I suppose I'm locking on to the, okay, yeah, I didn't really like that. I was wondering why I was locking there. Uh, we're gonna roll and pick up Polywoggle, so that seems great to me too. And I don't really have any great treasures that I want to grab. I think that Secret Stash is probably fine, especially as we are kind of greeting just to go all in and grab this Lancelot right now. But Magic Runes, I don't really want that to grab a tier six treasure from Lancelot. It's fine but it's nothing worth getting super excited over. Um, probably should have found the room to play the Polywoggle in some capacity on this combat, uh, but we're gonna wind up keeping it benched for now. And I guess it's fine my opponent had that Lightning Dragon anyways. Lance is gonna get the Slay, and I do think we're gonna die to some mummies. I guess it depends what that spell was. We actually got a tie, so I'll take that. My opponent is a Treasure Mapping Horde Dragon, so... That's always a little bit scary. We're gonna grab a tier five treasure here. We get to pick up Hand of Midas, which is awkward on 5.2, but I'm gonna make it work. It just means that now I just have to roll down for Nyan Sea Terror. There's nothing else that I'd potentially be interested in this turn. Maybe um, a spell to help us slay with Polywoggle, but otherwise 
we're just going to be looking for 9C Terra because anything else will remove our Hand of Midas. It is unfortunate, can't pick up something that there's like a double of in the shop or anything, but just going to wind up rolling down for the turn. Don't find much else in the way of anything and then just make 9C Terror good, and now I'm going to try to slay it with the Poliwoggle this turn. Let's see how that goes. And I wouldn't say that this is unlucky either if the Poliwoggle doesn't slay, because we're only giving it 5 attack with the Stag, so still definitely kind of a long shot. What's happening here? Okay, I thought that was playing. I don't know what happened, but... Um, <laughs> for some reason that paused. Uh, that was just the, uh, the Windows Media Player or something, but we're back into it. Polywoggle going to go up to five attack, like I said, and we just have to find an avenue for it to slay. No, yeah, no way that that's happening there. Uh, so we're going to wind up taking a wee little bit of damage this turn, though we also get plus three gold going into 6.0. So I guess that's kind of a nice trade-off. We get to pick up the Empress P, and uh, don't worry, I don't pick up the Golden Chicken. It's not uh, like a tragic game like that where I lose the Hand of Midas from that silly mistake, but I will pick up an upgraded Empress P. We don't quite have the support characters just yet, but when we find them... I think that that will be pretty nice for us. Now, if I could jump ahead, we can see we're only halfway through this one. This one goes on for a while. We beat the rest of the lobby to six by a lot. And because of that, I feel kind of comfortable trying to make this polywoggle work, even though I don't think it ever really will. And eventually I do wind up just cutting it. Find a few more support characters, a few more Empress P's, and then I'm eventually going to find the second Nine C Terror, which I'll use to hopefully add a Horn of Olympus or an Evil Eye to my board. That's gonna give me Horn. We can look at the choices. It was Horn and that was the only choice. Okay, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna roll a little bit more and then I wind up selling and picking up a Hercules, the feasting dragon I got off of a kidnap spell. Uh, so I'm just making use of that for the time being, though not super fruitful here. Uh, really, we're just going all in on this Empress P strategy. And we're actually already into the top four. That happened pretty quickly. And I think that we're strong enough that we're going to be able to take out this Wonder Waddle here, and that'll move us into the top three. So how are we getting that Holy Grail? That is the question. Am I still here? Great, okay. Um, so it's actually gonna be pretty similar to the previous game. I am going to wind up rolling for a little bit. I pick up a good boy this turn. That's a nice pickup. Um, that was a fine combat as well. I pick up another good boy, throw some stats onto it. Um, this combat we can take a look at. I think that we don't do super well. Oh, that's right. It is with uh, Muerte. They attack into one of our good boys here, and then um, I'm still playing this Hercules to try to grab the tier six treasure off of that, actually. So this is how we're going to grab the Pandora's box again from Hercules. Very, very similar games here that we got going on. I'm somewhat interested in the Phoenix Feather. Mimic Chest doesn't really do anything for us. Then I also get to grab another tier six treasure this same turn, and and Mimic Chest is kind of sweet with whatever potential tier 7 treasure we could find. It's just too fun to pass up. But uh, Singing Sword, probably a little bit more powerful. Ivory Owl, probably a little bit more powerful. Maybe I should have just gone for one of those two things. We already had Pandora's Box, but we're up against the Ghost. So I felt somewhat tempted in, um, or somewhat justified, I should say, in going for this. And then Here's where things get to go kind of crazy. We get to dream. Oh, I guess they don't go crazy here. Um, never mind. Um, I mean, this is still fine. We could dream into Sad Drac, get first attack, get a few more stats on the good boy. That's fine. I thought we dreamed into something better. Maybe we will next turn. And uh, I just got a little bit confused here, but we're going to wind up winning against the ghost. Here's where we'll see that Holy Grail. And we can watch this whole final turn as it plays out. Looking for good boy, looking for another support to replace the good witch as well. If we can find a Boom Hilda or another Lady of the Lake, I'm not as interested in replacing it with a Green Knight though. It's kind of like a side grade, uh, four six as opposed to zero ten, same amount of stats. 
find another Empress P now though, and then we also find another It Was All a Dream. So I'm gonna do one last lock to finish off the game, I think, and let's jump ahead to see that uh, dream choices, and we've got Horde Dragon as the possible uh, dream options here. Rumple still skin, we could have Rumple still skinned and doubled to grab 4,000 gold in one turn. Maybe that would have been worth it just for the meme. We've got the Mimic Chest Holy Grail, and then we could Rumple still skin it to uh, spin that into 4,000. So that would have been pretty silly, but dreaming into Horde Dragon is just so great. We find a good boy that gives us Mirror Mirror, then we find another tier, we find like another triple of good boys and that gives us uh, i don't know world tree something crazy uh we were obviously in a pretty crazy point from here as well and i thought that this board would be pretty strong but you have to look at who we're up against zippy the zombie is just such a powerful hero in the end game probably should have held on to my gloves of thieving even uh, but yeah this is just an insane board right now my opponent has insane treasures they've got mimic horn and uh evil eye to get doubled up by that mimic chest they're kidnapping our good boys or empress peas then they've got two upgraded good boys that we can't even kill because they've slayed with them so much so yeah this one was kind of crazy i'm just doing the math to see how much damage we're going to take and turns out it's exactly 19 so um, or wait, we had, let me, let me go back. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, okay, we also had 19 health. I was gonna say, my opponent had 19 health. Yeah, this is exactly 19 damage. So we go down to zero yet again. And then there's this game where I've got Eye of Ares on a pretty nice little Royals comp. Eye of Ares pumping up my Court Wizard, so my bonus attacks are just really insane. I'm also able to slay with my Ogre Princess, and then I'm also pumping up all of those sheep in the back line if if we need him but uh just a really really strong comp overall and this turn things get absolutely crazy i pick up this ogre princess triple and that gives me sky castle and that's going to allow me to triple up the princess peep and the gingerbread knight both on this turn and i think actually my problem in this game was i had too many options there were too many cool things presented to me and i didn't know how to just laser in and pick one i wind up getting a little bit greedy you can see we're the lobby leader right now and i'm kind of going to take that for granted a little bit uh, this is my last royal that's tripling here so i'm going to wind up tossing the Sky Castle, I don't know if I'll wind up regretting that later on, uh, but Staff of the Old Toad, also pretty good on Horde Dragon, allows you to grab some really powerful treasures in the end game. So I'm thinking that that could be fun, going to wind up picking that up, and then I also wind up selling out of my Baby Dragons to triple this Court Wizard. Probably a mistake, I definitely don't need another treasure this turn, though I could take Evil Eye. Um, there's part of me, so I guess I'll talk about this a little bit, um, I actually think I wind up floating the Evil Eye here for a second, and the plan is to toss either the Fool's Gold or the Eye of Ares next turn. Uh, part of the thought process here is I think that slay or support strategies could be really good on Horde Dragon right now, and I just talked about that with Pan Shadow. You want Tier 4 characters and Tier 5 treasures. Horde Dragon makes that work because all of your treasures are runestone. So that was something that was kind of on my mind a little bit here, though I should have pivoted. Um, when we just have so many powerful options here right now as Horde Dragon, I shouldn't be trying to make all of this stuff work, I don't think. I think that there's just uh, better things that I could have been doing. And then I also wind up getting a little bit distracted as we're gonna see this turn. Um, there is a King Arthur in the shop and we've got a bunch of Royals, but think what I'm actually doing, like I said, planning on trying to just see if we can make a slay comp work on horde dragon i should have i should have abandoned ship on this game though uh, but i am going to wind up picking up a lancelot which gives a tier six treasure and then i pick up Baba yaga which is like another tier five character what you really want to be doing is picking up the dragons and that's why i'm so conflicted right now i want to pick up the dragons to find the horn of olympus but then we also have Baba yaga plus ogre princess 
and that's awesome. So there's a lot of different things that I wanted to try here. Ultimately, I do believe I just wind up casting this XP spell and kind of abandoning it. XP, also so good on Horde Dragon. Kind of pulled in a bunch of different directions here, but it's fine. Uh, the other thing that I do want to consider too, and I think next turn I'm a little bit torn between casting more XP and looking for more support for Lancelot, because if we can find another Baba Yaga, then we can double support Lancelot, and that will be a nice way to activate it as well. So uh, that's definitely on my mind here, and uh, a nice way to activate that treasure. These Lightning Dragons are going to tear me up a little bit, and they unfortunately attack into my Court Wizard. Then I think these Mummies will do us a little bit dirty, but Ogre Princess does still get the attack, only slays once because Baba Yaga is dead, and Lancelot still gets the slay as well. We just uh, don't complete the treasure from it, but we can cast a spell on it potentially, or we can just find another Baba Yaga. That's, that's kind of what I'm in the mood for, uh, to just try to find a Baba Yaga, and then we can maybe triple the Baba Yagas, put all that support on the Ogre Princess. That seems pretty good. I do see the Sporko, and I do see the Wizard's Test, but I'm kind of going to, uh, there's also XP that is definitely worth considering, but I'm going to kind of laser in and try to grab this treasure from Lancelot. Maybe a little bit greedy. Uh, it does actually wind up working out. We do find the Baba Yaga, so I'm going to be able to activate this Lancelot. And then I believe what happens is I roll two more times and lock onto a third Baba Yaga. And then I want to grab that so I can triple that on the following turn. So... Let's jump ahead to that a little bit. Yeah, that is indeed what happens. And uh, Ogre Princess, oh yeah, this is a crazy combat too. Again, um, we see some spells and some lightning dragons. So Ogre Princess should be having an evil eye Baba Yaga support behind it. So I will say in this aspect, I do get a little bit unlucky. We have the lightning dragon on the last fight. And this Lightning Dragon, again, is going to attack into my Ogre Princess there. Now, Ogre Princess is still going to find a Slay, so that's good. It just only slays once instead of three times. That would have been absolutely incredible and uh, really set us up for some crazy things to happen in this game. Uh, we do wind up taking a little bit of damage here. We take 7 down to 28. I can take it. We are still the lobby leader. The only person still in the green, in fact. So doing quite well. And this game has to be a little bit different because we are playing with um, Horde Dragon, who uh, I'm not tripling a Hercules to get a pin, or I'm not activating a Hercules to get a Pandora's box is all that I mean. Uh, we have to triple a, or activate a Lancelot to get the Pandora's box. Uh, but still, just crazy how similar all these games are. That said, I don't think we're actually getting the Holy Grail a third time in a row from the Pandora's box, but it is worth bringing up, like, Holy Grail, I think, is a really good treasure, and Pandora's Box is a really good treasure. Pandora's Box into Holy Grail is a long time to wait for your payoff for grabbing, especially a Hercules treasure, which we got the past two days. This time it was a Lancelot, which, or past two games. Um, this time it was a Lancelot, so this happened a little bit quicker, but... It's basically like a treasure four or five turns in the making, which is definitely a little bit on the slow side. And here, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do once I hit level three. I'm gonna wind up picking up an Emperor's P, and I actually like selling everything in my hand when I'm going for Ogre Princess Baba Yaga, because as long as this Ogre Princess can slay, which it finally gets to, we're going to be able to fill a bunch of slots in our hand and even overflow a little bit into the shop. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to give us a bunch of characters this turn and give us the means to potentially grab some more tier seven treasures, which is actually how we're going to get the Holy Grail in this one. We will take a little bit of damage, uh, 14 down to 14, but I think that that is okay. We get to pick up a mirror mirror, which isn't super impressive with what we currently have going on. It is good with the court wizard, uh, though overall is a little bit awkward. Uh, but what is nice is we get to pick up some uh, free level six characters, though. None are like particularly impressive with what we got going on. I'm thinking I might move into a Jormungand board. And while I like the Empress P Jormungand Riverwish Mermaid that's currently in the shop of it all, 
we don't have the horn. So it's not the easiest to just say, okay, I'm gonna play Empress P with just this Baba Yaga. Doesn't really do much because I also wanna use the Baba Yaga on my characters that can actually slay. And uh, all of it just winds up being a little bit awkward this turn. I do see another River Wish Mermaid here and I'm thinking about it, but I'm also thinking maybe we could just move into trees or something after uh, Ogre Princess grabs another sleigh for us here. So that's kind of the idea. I do like Good Boy though, with the fact that we've got Mirror Mirror. So I am going to wind up picking that up and replacing uh, the uh, Gingerbread Knight with the Good Boy. Good Boy's also strong because we've got the uh, Dancing Sword. So there's a lot of options there with that too. I think about putting in a second Echo Wood, uh, but ultimately I just get owned by Lightning Dragons here. Pretty awkward stuff. Also going to attack into Baba Yaga. Again, I still get the Slay, but not exactly the Slay I was looking for. Not a total Slay, just a half Slay. Ogre Princess misses the second Slay, uh, but I think that we will still survive here. It's just gonna be close. As long as we get rid of that Vein Pyre, uh, which we do, just barely. Uh, and then it comes back off the Phoenix Feather, but still then we'll get rid of my opponent's uh, River Wish Mermaid, and then we get rid of their Vein Pyre again. So we're gonna take eight damage down to six, but we also picked up a good boy off of the Ogre Princess, and now we're up against the Ghost, and we get to add Ivory Owl to the board. We'll toss Evil Eye for that. Uh, despite really liking the Evil Eye plus Baba Yaga interaction, I don't know, it just hasn't been working for us. So how much can we really say that we like it? Now we are up against the Ghost, like I said, so there's some definite opportunity to do some powerful stuff here. Um, I think that this ultimately might be a little bit greedy though still. Um, maybe I should have just kept the treasures that I currently have. Maybe I could have gone for, oh wow, okay, this isn't even the Holy Grail. This is Excalibur or Magic Sword plus 100. I guess it's Magic Sword plus 100 uh, instead of Singing Sword. And then I'll just put a good boy in that first slot. Um, yeah, okay, I kind of forgot how that was going. And uh, against the Ghost, I'm not going to worry about putting a good boy in the first slot. We'll figure it out. So that's why it's greedy. Okay, I still haven't found the Holy Grail yet. I was going to say, like, if I were to pick up a Holy Grail this turn, I think that that's, like, kind of reasonable. If I were to pick up a Holy Grail after this point, um, especially tossing one of my existing treasures to do so, it's definitely a little bit on the greedier side because we're gonna have to toss probably the Ivory Owls to even be able to pick that up. But we're already into the top five. Uh, I think after this combat, we're gonna get into like the top four and then uh, we'll lose and get third place. Yeah, I'm spoiling it, but uh, all three of these games end exactly the same. With a Holy Grail on the line, I die and get third place. So that part of the spoiler was already taken care of, hate to tell ya. But uh, we will wind up winning up against the Ghost and then we get a few free things from the shop. Um, the Ogre Princess that comes back can give us tier four characters, of course, here. And uh, the Ogre Princess actually itself just gives us the Holy Grail. I was a little bit curious about that because I was like, okay, we already have the Empress P triple. What are we tripling to grab the Holy Grail? Turns out we're just grabbing something else a little bit extra. Round Table plus Magic Sword plus 100. Kind of cool, kind of probably correct to do, but <laughs> uh, wind up taking it a little bit in a different direction with um, the Holy Grail. I thought that that would be sweet and it, it was just too greedy. So for this game, I definitely think I deserved it. I will say that maybe it was the folly of the previous games that just made me want it that much more, if that makes sense. Uh, that, you know, you, you you see that Holy Grail for so long and everybody's yearning for it. You know, that's the that's the whole story of the Holy Grail, right? Um, that there's just such a temptation and such a hunt 
to make it work. So we're still on the hunt here, not quite going to get her done in this one. No no use locking onto Evil Twin. I guess I will lock on to Good Boy, though, just a Good Boy itself. Uh, you don't lock on to Evil Twin there, though, because there's just better spells that you can cast, probably. Um, but we wind up facing up against this Lightning Dragon opponent yet again. I think I wasn't paying attention to uh, Lightning Dragons too much or just, like, enough to who I was playing against. But now these Empress Peas have nothing and we're going to wind up losing to a bunch of ranged characters. So, kind of awkward. Uh, yeah, we just won't have the stats to survive here. We're going to lose one of our characters there, and then lose one of our characters there, take 12, and get third with a Holy Grail yet again. So, that is going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was fun, uh, just to look at how greedy uh, I can be sometimes when trying to do sweet things in these videos. And each of these videos had like something, or each of these games had something a little bit sweet going on in them. Uh, but ultimately, I just thought it was crazy how in, and I played these games um, basically, so this video is gonna come out Sunday. I played these games Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, one game each day and each time the exact same thing happened to me. Uh, so I just thought it was a pretty crazy coincidence. Uh, but that is gonna be it for me today, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I'm No Lux Given. Peace.